And welcome everybody. Hey, thanks for joining the live stream. I am here with none other than Take One, Portfest with Garth Schulte. Mr. Garth Schulte, <laughs> welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Keith. You know, Garth, is. Uh, we are doing some collaboration up here in Las Vegas. Uh, you're from Buffalo, where I believe the temperature is like, uh, what is it right now, like 15 degrees? Yeah, very cool. Is that cold. like the high? Yeah. Ah, freezing. So welcome to Vegas. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, the weather is fantastic. Yeah, so <laughs> for people who are watching this later, uh, it's it's January 22nd, so glad to have you. Yeah. Um, I invited Garth to join us for this live stream on Portfast, and so we have some specific objectives, and let me bring up uh, the screen so we can talk about those. So here's our specific objectives for uh, Portfast. Uh, number one is in this live stream today, we're going to identify why is it, why do we need it. Uh, secondly is how do we implement and verify it. And let me make sure I got all my points here. Oh yeah, and why we have this problem to begin with. So um, to start off this discussion for Portfast or Spanning Tree, <laughs> you're looking at me like, hey Keith, how you doing? Um, <laughs> will you play a game with me? Sure, sure. It's not the game we played earlier, I hope, where <laughs> no. you beat me with this Ethernet cable. No, 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 oh, no, okay, no. Okay. no. That other game doesn't get recorded. <laughs> so I'm going to give you this old laptop. Now, it's an older laptop. You can still use it with like Linux or things that run fairly fast, even though it's older. So I'm, here you go. All right, old laptop. So my question for you, let's say it doesn't have wireless, you're going to connect to a wired network. All right, <laughs> so let's imagine that Garth is going to plug into a real network. So he's going to plug into a switch, and uh, we have an RJ45 connector, Wrong and side. we plug it in here, and then we plug the other side of the switch. Now, uh, Then we'll verify this problem that Spanning Tree has and why it has it, and then we'll walk through a solution together. So... Um, for those of you who've been through the other uh, session we had on Spanning Tree, Spanning, you know what? Spanning Tree is an amazing thing. It's looking out for us. Spanning Tree at layer two is looking for parallel paths in the network. And if it sees them, it's going to say, whoa, and it's going to temporarily block on some ports so we don't have a loop. Nobody wants a layer two loop. But at the same time, if we have one of our paths that goes down, Spanning Tree can identify that's down and then reconverge and to keep forwarding traffic. So in a previous, you weren't here for this one, Garth, but in a previous discussion, we identified some basic concepts of spanning tree, and I think these would be valuable as we take a look at the problem they cause for this user. And I want to name this user a uh, name. What, what name uh, should we? I let Bob. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> now, do you know why I call these user uh, the user Bob? I'm sure you've told the story many times, but I, I'd love to hear it again. Do, do, you, do you know though, personally? Uh, I've heard it, but I, I don't remember what's happening. So my dad's name is Bob. Oh yeah, okay. And my mom's yeah. name is Lois, and so I told the, the group they've seen it, but that's why I use Bob. It's a it's an affectionate. Uh, remembrance of my 90 year old father as a typically user. Although um, my dad, you know, he's, he's doing great. So anyway, um, this user Bob is, has his computers connecting to an access port on this multi, on this switch, switch five. So on this port right here, the reason that Bob is in VLAN 10 is because somebody went to that switch and on that switch, they went to the interface config and said, switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10 and boom, that's an access port in VLAN 10. And we covered that in the previous video on VLANs and trunking. So it's all there if anybody wants to see it in the playlist. So with spanning tree, spanning tree is going to elect a root bridge. And this would be a, now you might be saying, well, Keith, we've, we've covered spanning tree before. This is gonna be a really high level overview. So if you haven't yet seen that video on spanning tree, uh, let this be not a teaser, but an opportunity for you to go back to that live stream on Spanning Tree and look at the details. So in Spanning Tree, we're going to elect E-L-E-C-T-A. That doesn't look right. E-L-E, I guess it is. Elect our root bridge. And that root bridge is elected based on the lowest bridge ID. And the bridge ID is three factors. It's the bridge priority, plus the VLAN identifier, plus the base MAC address. And when I say base MAC address, let me go ahead and take off that last piece there. Uh, when I say base MAC address, if you do like a show version on a Cisco switch, mm -hmm. it'll show the base MAC address. So it's not the, like, when I was first learning spanning tree about 25 years ago, <laughs> I thought, well, the MAC address you mean on that port? And no, it's a base MAC address, like for the whole system. If you do a show version, it'll show you the base MAC address. And that goes into the bridge identifier. So here on these five switches, I have the base MAC address. The default priorities are all set. And based on the one that has the lowest bridge ID, which is now based on the lowest MAC address here, base MAC address, it's going to be the root. And that's switch one, because this character two, with all else being equal, is lower than seven, hexadecimal C, four, or hexadecimal four, or F, four, F. <laughs> so this device is going to be the root, and on root ports, or root switches, they get to forward on all ports. And so on this root switch, this would be a designated port, this would be a designated port, this would be a designated port, and this is a, an access port that's also in VLAN 10. And then the other switches have to identify, okay, we lose, you know, you gotta make the best of it. So 
if switch one is the root, switch everybody else is not the root. And so they say, well, what's the best path to get to the root? And what they do is they identify their root port based on the best cost. So I'm gonna draw on the root ports here. And in our previous discussion, we talked about this in more detail. So the lowest cost on switch two is one, one. The lowest cost to get to the root on switch three is one, three. And uh, the lowest cost on switch. Now, <clears throat> you're not responsible for knowing this, Garth. <laughs> the other people who have been in the stream who've looked at this, the video on spanning tree, yeah. every network segment is only going to have one designated port. That's a port that's forwarding away from the Do it is the switch that has the lowest cost to get to the root. Now, the cost for switch four to get to the root is four, is four, and the cost for switch three to get to the root is four. So that is no longer a tiebreaker. Yeah. Next, they say, well, uh, between the two of us, which one has the lowest bridge ID? And then it's once again based on which of these two devices has a lower bridge ID. So this is an abbreviated version, this root port. This is going to be a blocking port. This is going to be a designated port. This is going to be a designated port. This is going to be a designated port. And for more details on spanning tray, <laughs> there's three options. One, go back in this YouTube channel on the on the playlist and just take a look at the, this, the video on uh, spanning tree. There's also um, other commercial products, CBT Nuggets that I've got and that Jeremy's created regarding spanning tree and more details there. But again, this is just an abbreviated version. The one on YouTube is, a, is pretty good if you want to go back and look at the details of spanning tree. But this is where I want to talk about the problem. And the problem is this switch right here, switch five, is going to be a designated port for VLAN 10. So that was all to say that this port is forwarding. But you know spanning tree? If, if you and I interviewed spanning tree, and I have us back on camera for a moment, if you and I interviewed Spanning Tree and said, Dear Mr. Spanning Tree, how are you? I think Spanning Tree would say, I'm nervous. I'm <laughs> always nervous. And we say, What do you mean you're nervous? He'll say, Well, like, like, like if a port comes up, you know, before I start forwarding on it, I'm going to listen for a while and I want to make sure there's not another loop in the path. And so I'm just going to be really careful and listen for a while before I actually start to forward frames. So the traditional Spanning Tree would go through listening and then learning. That could be 15 seconds each. And then forwarding, if it's rapid spanning tree, it would just be list, uh, learning and forwarding. But still, it could be a, a period of time before it says, oh, it's safe. It's just an end user device. And that's the problem we have right here, is that when this port is bounced, when it comes up, switch five is paranoid, saying, well, off of this port, zero, zero, uh, it could be another switch. Um, it could be also another loop. And so it wants to wait. And so with the original flavor, of spanning tree IEEE 802.1D, which Cisco, the closest we can get to that with Cisco is called um, per VLAN spanning tree, but it's backwards compatible with uh, 802.1D. And what it will do on this port, if we bounce this port, this port will, it'll come up and then it'll go to a listening state for at least 30 seconds, oh, sorry, that's the total, for 15 seconds based on the default timers. And then it'll go to a learning state based on a timer of 15 seconds also, that's the forward delay time. And then after that 30 seconds, if it doesn't see any BPDUs coming in on that port from another, what would be another switch, it says, oh, I guess it's, <laughs> I guess it's safe, let's forward. And by that time, with your laptop, 30 seconds have gone by, it's like, why can't I get on the network? And that's why. I've rebooted by then. Yeah, I rebooted, got another <laughs> port, going to Wi-Fi, I'm using a different connection. Exactly, exactly. I love the, the authenticity of that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So to solve this, what we can use is a feature called PortFast. And PortFast can be implemented in a few different ways, but here's the basic gist of it. If PortFast is enabled on a port, it simply says, relax, spanning tree. There's nothing out there that's going to harm you. Just go forward. Skip the listening and learning state if you're running IEEE 802.1D. Skip the learning state if you're running rapid spanning tree. Just go to forwarding. It'll be okay. And that's how it works. Now, there's a couple of, I think what we had to do is um, we should verify this. So let me bring up, let's do this. Let's bring up a client. This is PC5 in the lab I have. And PC5 has a MAC address here, right here ending in 04. And it's on port 00 of switch five. So what I think we had to do is just shut down this port on the switch, bring it up. And we don't even need a, a, like a timer. We can just look at the spanning tree state and say, wow, Still listening? <laughs> Still learning? <laughs> this user has gone on to other things. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and hide that Scrabble for a moment. That Scrabble. 
That's a game. That's like a word game. Right? It is. It's a good word game. Okay. Yeah. Scribble. That's what you're looking for. Yes, the scribble. <laughs> and let's go to Switch 5. Let me log on. And here on Switch 5, let's do some verifications. Let's do a show. Spanning tree. Well, let's, you know what? I always tell uh, uh, people that join us, I say, you know what? It's always a good idea to verify which device you're on before you do it. Because mm -hmm. in the lab or if you're in production environments, like in AWS or Azure or in a switched or network routed environment or firewall, if you're on the wrong device accidentally and you start issuing the commands, they take them. Like, oh, yeah, great, great. If it's the wrong device, you've just totally made a problem. So <laughs> I tell, I encourage everybody to do some show commands, verify you're on the right device. Let's do a show VLAN brief. And what this command does, it shows uh, output including the VLANs and any access ports that are in those VLANs. Oh, I was looking for gig zero zero in VLAN one. It's not. It's right there. It's in VLAN ten. And if if you notice, we have some ports that aren't showing up here at all, and that's probably because they're trunks. So if we do a show interfaces trunk, these are the these gig two and three three on switch five. Those are trunk interfaces. And that's why they don't show up as access ports. So hitting the up arrow key twice. Um, what we want to do is verify that gig zero zero is the where the client is. And he's in the DevOps VLAN right there. And let's go ahead and shut it down. In fact, you know what? Let me let's also test it. This is PC5 on that port. Before we shut it down, let's ping 10.0.10.10.0.10. And before I do that ping, let's talk about where that is. So this is this PC on port 00, switch 5, with the IP address of 10.10.0.11. And he's doing a ping of PC1, who's also in VLAN 10, off of switch 1, access port 00. And, he's, and the IP address of the PC up there is 10, 10, 0, 10. So we're pinging across this switched infrastructure. That's the, <laughs> that's the hope anyway. All right, so back at the PC, we'll do the ping. And the crowd goes mild. Nice ping, Bob yes. Parker. Yes, do you get excited? Well, maybe excited is too strong a word, but I get excited when a ping works. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah, basic connectivity, love it for ICMP. <laughs> All right, also ICMP is protocol number one. Yeah. I was like, how did it look out like that? You know, TCP is protocol, uh, six, UDP is 17 in decimal, and ICMP, man, I'm number one. He's probably at parties, I'm number one, I'm <laughs> protocol number one. Okay, so we have connectivity there, and let's go bounce his port and change his attitude. So here on switch five, and to make sure we're on the same page here, this is switch five, we're at the console at now, we're gonna shut down that access port that Bob is currently connected to. So to do that, we'll go into configuration mode, interface gig zero slash zero, and use the favorite command of shut <laughs> shut <Shug> down. <laughs> I've shut down. And let's do a do show spanning tree for VLAN 10. Now, the reason, Garth, uh, people in the in the stream probably know, but the reason I use the do command there is that if in this version of iOS, to issue a show command, you have to exit out of configuration mode, do the show command, then go back into configuration mode, and the do says, eh, cut him some slack. Yeah. yeah, just go ahead and just do the command. Uh, the trick is you have to know the syntax because the context sensitive help is rather limited at that point. So what this is showing us is that that port is, uh... <laughs> hold on a second. Oh yeah, it shut down. So there's not a whole lot of spanning tree action going on in gig zero zero because the port is down. So let's bring it back up. And as we bring it back up, I'll wait for the port to give us a console message and we'll do the show command again for spanning tree for VLAN 10. And what we'll see is that that port, gig 00, is listening. listening. Yeah. And it'll happen for approximately 15 seconds. Then it'll go to learning for approximately 15 seconds. And meanwhile, let's go to PC5 and pretend this is you trying to get on the network. Yeah. Ah, screams and, you know, like, I'm moving on. My computer's broke. Support. We're bouncing the interface. But basically, <laughs> until this, let's go back and take a look one more time at switch 5. If we hit the up arrow key again. Oh, now it's going through learning. So it's been at least 15 seconds have gone by. So it's got, so IEEE, the original flavor, which is implemented on Cisco with per VLAN spanning tree, uh, the forward delay time is what controls that. And so we're gonna go through listening for 15 seconds, the forward delay, and then through learning for 15 seconds. And then finally, if we wait long enough, up arrow key. Oh, finally it's forwarding. And now we go back to PC5 and we hit the up arrow key and pings work again. All right, so major problem, major, major problem. So the solution to this is, is running PortFast. And there's, um, there's a couple options for PortFast. Actually, there's 
there's more than a couple. I'm going to share a couple with you. One is we can go to the interface, gig00 in this case, and just say, spanning tree port fast, enter, boom. And what it'll do, it'll simply tell spanning tree, hey, on this port, there's nothing to worry about. If it comes up, just go ahead and move to forwarding state. No listening, no learning. If it's rapid spanning tree, no learning, and just go to forwarding. That's one way. The other option, which is more preferable usually, is that we can go to global config on the switch and just say spanning tree port fast default. And then, this is important, then it only applies to, to, access, to ports that are configured as access ports. So the trunks won't get port fast by default, but the access ports, if they're configured as access ports, they'll get port fast by default. Beautiful. You want to try, you yeah. know, flip a coin? You want to try one of those? One, which, you want to do either one, both of them? Both, yeah. Okay. We'll start at the port level, move on to default. <laughs> I love it. I like your thinking. <laughs> if we start at the default, then it wouldn't be too effective. Yeah. So yeah. we'll start at the port level. We'll tell gig zero zero on switch five that we're going to use port fast, and then we'll verify it. I'll show you a couple of cool telltale signs that say, hey, it's on, and then we'll do it as a default. I love it. So going back to switch number five, and in our topology, to bring everybody together here. We're on switch five, and we're gonna focus on gig zero zero, which is the access port in VLAN 10 that Bob is connected to. So we'll go to the interface, uh, and just just for grins, I'm hitting the up arrow, up arrow key a few times. Even though I was in interface gig zero zero, the, the iOS doesn't tell us which interface. So I just wanna make darn Perfect. sure yeah. I'm really <laughs> in the right interface. <laughs> and then we use the command spanning tree, question mark, Port fast, easy for me to say. <laughs> uh, and then press enter. Now, if we enabled it globally, or you know, miss it as the default, we also have the option here to turn it off individually. And that's why the disable option's there. So we've just turned it on, it's warning us, well, I'm not gonna do checking, I'm gonna go right to forwarding. And that's exactly what we want. And let's do this, let's do a show spanning tree for VLAN 10. And here's the telltale sign. Under the type, so here's gig00, zero zero. and let me bring up my pen. So for gig00, zero zero, uh, this, this shared part right here is if you have a physical switch, I have a virtualized environment at the moment, but on a physical switch, if it's a full duplex circuit, like the interface is full duplex, uh, it'll show as P2P. And with rapid spanning tree, it really appreciates that because it can do negotiations and faster convergence. If it's, for whatever reason, not seeing it as a full duplex link, a rather half duplex, it'll show up as shared. So that's what this part means. And as I clear that off, this is the part that represents whether or not port fast is effectively running on this port. If it says edge, the, the only reason that says edge is because either through the default configuration or through individual port configuration, port fast in measurable terms is enabled on that port. That's what it means. And we could also, um, we could also verify that this way. We could do a, Show command, let me get my mouse in the right place. Show spanning tree, VLAN 10, interface gig, zero slash zero, detail. You know, I was just hoping they would add like at least one more option there so I can make it a longer command. <laughs> but effectively this says, okay, because the same interface could be involved in multiple instances of spanning tree. You know, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, VLAN 30. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, mm -hmm. I want to show VLAN 10 related information specifically for interface gig zero, zero, and I want everything. And that's what this command does. So right here is showing us that, among other things, which are for a professional level discussion. By the way, just, I'm just finishing the uh, CCNP level for Encore for uh, rapid spanning tree and multiple, uh, multiple spanning tree. It's amazing, amazing. including amazing. labs. And so I get into all this and all the details at the professional level, so it comes to me in that. But for now, the port is in the port fast mode. And that is another way to confirm, if you didn't like looking at the word edge, to confirm that this port is running port fast. Now the other option, uh, if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN 10 summary, which I love this command. So show spanning tree VLAN 10 summary, what this says is which features are enabled and I wanna focus just on this one right here. So globally on this switch for VLAN 10, uh, well I should say globally on the switch, port fast isn't enabled. If it was, it would show up right here and say port fast default is enabled. So let's go ahead and enable it. So config T. Now, <laughs> heads up, nobody blink. <laughs> this is pretty fast. We're going to touch that in spanning tree, port fast, default, boom, and that's it. And that what that means is every access port, not the trunks, but every port that's an access port 
is automatically going to get port fast enabled on it. So let's go ahead and do it. So spanning tree, port fast, default, and it's done. So if we hit that same command, show spanning tree VLAN 10 summary, now it's showing us that port fast default is enabled. And now, even if we took off that individual port fast command on gig 00, it's still, you know, we should do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we should do it. So we'll go into interface gig For 00. Science. Yeah. Science. And I'm going to hit the up arrow key a few times. And uh, there we go. I'm just going to do a control A to go to bed at the beginning. Say no. I feel like Nancy Reagan. <laughs> do, do you remember that? No. <laughs> so they had this whole policy on drugs, and her uh, her theme was just say no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've disabled it on the port, but because it's still a default, and we can verify that with this command, show spanning tree VLAN 10 summary, uh, because port fast right here, default is enabled. Now, if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN 10, we'll notice that the edge is still there. And if we do a up arrow key a few times for that detail command, there you go. This will also confirm that the port is in port fast mode by default, and that's because of the global default. Now, I think what we also should do is uh, a little demo that it actually works <laughs> because <laughs> we've talked about the problem with spanning tree, and that is it's going to wait a long time by default on access ports and everywhere else before it starts forwarding. We've talked about how to solve that with port fast, both the interface command and the port fast default for the whole switch. But it would also be important to verify that it really does the job. So let's do that next. And so PC5, let's start off with the ping. Give me a ping, 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 ping. And it works, great. Um, and let's go ahead and turn on port. Uh, port fast is already enabled. Yeah. All we need to do is bounce the port. <laughs> I was trying to think, what, what do we need to do here? So I'm going to do a. I was going to give you a nudge. Thank you very much. Keeping me honest. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, your content at CBT is so amazing, oh, too. Oh, thanks, bro. Um, uh, you want to. Remind me at the end. I'd like you to give a highlight of what you're currently working on. Sure. What yeah. you're excited about, yeah. and also the labs because they are great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I digress. Interface gig zero zero. <laughs> Shut down. I'm gonna give that up. You know, with switches, I like to give them about four or five seconds to really figure out live, get the result. There you go. Wait for the console message, and then do the no shutdown, and then show spanning tree for. VLAN 10, and Bob's port just came up, and boom, forwarding. Right away. <laughs> right away. And so if we go to PC5 again and just hit the up arrow key, uh, we now have connectivity. So the, the thing is with port fast is that when Cisco uh, implemented a whole bunch of enhancements, and we were on camera again, when they, okay, when, uh, when they implemented a whole bunch of enhancements for spanning tree, like backbone fast, uplink fast, and so forth, um, Rapid spending tree incorporated those. They added them. So they're built in. But port fast, no. Port fast, if you want it, you still need to enable it. And that's whether you're running the original Colonel Sanders crispy flavor, <laughs> 802.1D, or 802.1W, which is rapid spending tree. And the way I rem remember rapid spending tree is uh, Elmer Fudd. Any guesses why? No, no. <laughs> I'm hunting Wabbits, Wabbits, Wabbits. Oh, Wabbits. 802.1W, yeah, yeah. Wabbits Spanning Tree. That's good. 802.1W, W, if you forget that one, it's on you now. <laughs> okay, so um, with Rapid Spanning Tree and Traditional Spanning Tree, port fast, whether it's enabled by default on the, on the switch or individual port, it's helpful. And there's actually one other really big benefit of using port fast, and that's this. Can we borrow your laptop again? Okay. Let's imagine that you just disconnect from the network, you reconnect, oh, okay. and port fast is not enabled. So yeah. you do the waiting game, ha, 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 wait, wait, wait. What's going to happen is when you connect as an access port and port fast isn't enabled, your, uh, the switch you're connected to is going to send a topology change notification towards the root. Now, it works a little different with rapid spanning tree, but either way, at the end of the day, there's a topology change notification that's sent, and it means every switch, it's like a broadcast, Everybody in VLAN 10, all the switches, instead of remembering your MAC address tables for the normal five minutes, which you're supposed to, uh, if you haven't seen a MAC address in 15 seconds, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it. There's been a topology change. Woo, woo. <laughs> so if we have five switches in, our, in VLAN 10, all of them will dump all their MAC addresses based on one client connecting to VLAN 10. Ouch. And change, you see yeah. So the solution to that is port fast. Port fast, if we enable it on our access ports, when that client connects, Says, ah, it's just, just a client, no topology change needed, we're okay. So I, I, can't I can't imagine, I've seen it, 
in networks that have hundreds of clients and they're not using Portfast. They, if you looked at uh, the protocol analyzer, they're having topology change notifications, hundreds of them every minute from clients connecting, disconnecting in that network. And then that's just the, the MAC address tables is being dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped. So usually a high level of TCNs, topology change notifications, is an indication that something's not optimized or, or doing great. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to cover a few things in this live stream, and then we'll uh, and they were take a look at the problems with spanning tree that it has for access ports. And that is, what would you say the problem is for an access port, like your where this PC is connected? Listening and learning states. Yeah, yeah. just the just the way I checking that off, Garth, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, and how do we solve that? Enable port pass. You got it. And <laughs> does it matter how we enable it? Uh, what would you recommend? Default. If you're being paid by the hour, <laughs> yeah. and you have thousands Indiv of ports. Individual ports. Yeah. Manual. Slow it down. <laughs> um, but using the default would be great. And then um, through network automation with APIs, you, you could probably just automate that in a heartbeat with network automation. Oh. So, um, and then we also mentioned uh, how to. And we verified it with the lab, and then we also took a look at or mentioned topology change notifications. Okay. So uh, I covered what I wanted to in this live stream. I would like to chat for a moment with Garth about what you're working on at CBT Nuggets. Thanks for coming out here in Vegas to collaborate with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for bringing me out. So tell me what is the up and coming amazing thing with what you're creating? Uh, I'm working on Server 2019, System Administration stuff. Uh -huh. Just covering some of the new features. If you want to talk to the them? essential features I'd be okay with that. Server 2019. I like talking to you too. Okay, all right. But talk to you both. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, just... Just uh, digging into Server 2019 and having fun, and, and it's a it's a lab-based course, so every single nugget, almost every nugget, has a lab associated with it to follow along and, and get hands-on, and it's really targeted at um, beginners, beginners to intermediate sysadmins who uh, just want to get familiar with the essentials and learn some of the new features in Server 2019 and get hands-on, most importantly. Okay, so if I'm a... If I'm a person i'm an you it are a person. i know i I, mean, I, qual I qualify <laughs> i qualify <laughs> finally um if i'm a person who's new to it um i've been on a windows active directory network forever but never administered it would this be above or the right level for me to get in this and, would be a good level we, okay because we, we start at ground level okay ramp it up a little quickly and then get into best practices as well so all right so you're you're going to explain it uh, I lab it up to test it side by side. I, what I do when I do labs, I use I use two devices. Sometimes an iPad for the actual for screen, and, and then the computer yeah. for the oh, yeah. or two yeah, screens. So, um, so going through that, uh, you explain the concepts, you lab it up. I do the practice, and at the end of how many is how many courses is that? Uh, it's just one course. Just one course. One and course. so at the end of that, what am I like? What am I? What am I prepared to do? Uh, you're pre the, the main purpose of this yeah, yeah, is yeah. To, to get you excited and get you prepped and ready okay. and to wet your appetite for Server 2019, okay. which we're waiting for the new certifications from Microsoft okay. to drop sometime this year. So by the end of this, you'll be able to explain all the essential technologies in Server 2019, like okay. Think Networking, DNS, DHCP, Active Directory, Hyper-V. We get into a little PowerShell. And we also have the very last skill in the course is a troubleshooting lab challenge. So, all right. Just introduce you to some challenges. And is that all made already? All ready to go? Uh, almost. We've almost. got a couple of skills left. Almost. It'll be ready in uh, February of 20. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And uh, I, I love. I've loved everything I've seen you create. Oh, uh, you thanks. spend a lot of attention to detail in labs and caring about the learners and, and maximizing their time, which I'm grateful for. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Well, thanks for joining me for oh. what day is it? Wednesday. So this so. is a CCNA <laughs> related session on port fast. Why we need it. How to configure it. How to verify it in a Cisco environment. Uh, also, other vendors, by the way, like HP and Juniper and so forth, they've got the equivalent. Okay. The implementation is slightly different, but similar. is it called Portface? You know, you'd have to go to those vendors. <laughs> I, I I was Juniper certified like eight years ago, and I haven't touched one since then. So when I come up with a new course, like like I did uh, Palo Alto, I get to dive back into that. Um, sit, um, um, oh my gosh, Checkpoint. Checkpoint. Uh, I love yeah, Checkpoint. I, check I love Palo Alto and Cisco's new Firepower services. They're in the firepower and the, the management center. It's great stuff. So I get a chance to dive into those, but I haven't dove into uh, Juniper probably in seven or eight years. Yeah. And HP maybe even longer. <laughs> so it's just a matter of what we need to train on. That's what I jump into. Like right now, the only thing on my mind is spanning tree. That's because I'm finishing the CCNP level spanning tree with multiple spanning tree. Yeah. And so that's all I'm thinking about. Like root ports, designated ports, common spanning tree, internal spanning tree, you know, instance one, instance two, mapping it here, mapping it there. This is the fast version of it, by the way. But in the course, I, I lay it all out. So, all right. Everybody, thank you very much. Uh, next Saturday.
We're going to do another live stream, and that'll be for Subnet Saturday, followed by CCNA Sunday. These are all parts of Playlist. If you haven't, three things. If you haven't already, click on subscribe so you can be aware of when new content comes out. Hit the bell. That helps you get alerts that those things are ready. Get a study buddy. It's always more fun when you're studying and, and pursuing and learning new things with another person. It'll help you that social bond as well. Uh, I was telling him previously about um, um, my studies for CCN CCIE back in 2001. My uh, study buddy was Ed Inez. I am a CCIE 6783. Mm -hmm. He has CCIE 6784. We passed on the same day. That's Twelve fantastic. people walked in. Three people walked out wow. with the CCA, and I was one of them. Uh, but he pushed me at the last, like, last two weeks, I was tired of studying. You ever been there? Oh, yeah, many times. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I don't want to do voiceover, right? PA, why do it? He's like, dude, get some, you know, get some kahunas. Pull it together. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> and he encouraged me, he, and I did, and that was my, that was the, the difference between me passing and failing was that private line automatic ring down, so I'm grateful. So anyway, yeah. uh, okay, so subscribe, hit the bell, get a study buddy, and have fun. Uh, life's pretty easy. Well, I, I mean, life isn't always easy. Life is worth it. It's fun. And if you make small progress, small steps in the right direction, that's the secret. Yeah. Like for me, just doing huge lifts, very difficult for retention, for uh, quality of life. And in my history, I'm 55 now. In my history of learning and training and getting a couple CCIAs and other master certifications, it's step by step, just progressing, find out where you are, take the next step. And enjoy the enjoy the growth. And what I find is that most people don't continue. Yeah. They'll start and they'll just stop. So it's really easy to win. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's so true in anything, like in sports. Now you had you you won some uh, awards for was it uh, ATVs or oh, motorbikes yeah, in your kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three wheeling, which I don't even think are legal anymore. <laughs> wow, those are the big puffy wheels. Yeah, the the three wheels to it. And you won some competitions. Yeah, sure did. So how did yeah. you get really quickly? How do you? Because it relates to what we're doing here with CC. Practice schools. every day. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I mean that's the secret sauce, right? It wasn't it's just like okay, I'm gonna study for eighteen hours straight on the ATV. Yeah, no. Just, it was step by step and step. Yeah, just stay consistent. Okay. Yeah, keep making a routine and do it every day. All right. You live every day. All right. <laughs> with that, I'm gonna find some really good exit music for us, which I think I found. And on behalf of Garth and myself, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you in another live stream. Until then, have a really, really great day, evening, and rest of the week. Bye.